They should include this in every recap of every episode of every season. was a fearless warrior. Is Kicha even really dead? Forgive my skepticism. I changed myself. I can do the same for you. Don't. I feel like I'm failing Amber. Everything in these books is real. <laughs> Such a good episode. In hindsight, so many things happened. The season really ramped up at a certain point. Four or five. Please, I can't handle any more subplots. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank God. I say that, but I, I love it. Okay, that's just... Is that really what I look like? If you think that's weird. No. <laughs> I would, I, yeah, I don't know. Mixed feelings. Invincible, damn it. Flattery and also irritation? I don't know. I think just flattery if you're doing it right. It's only irritating if you're insecure. What a nice thing to be a source of inspiration to people. I was thinking about something related recently because, you know, you look up one strategy related question for Persona 5 and suddenly your notifications are flooded with Persona subreddit stuff. I really do think it's none of my business what people do and how they enjoy their time. And also I think it's really important to incorporate time into analysis. So whatever phase someone is in, whatever they're into, no matter how it might be looked at or judged superficially, it, it might actually be the most important stage for that person at that time. I would wager a guess that the reason anything is compelling at all ever is because there is something in there that's important and necessary for the person. And then the question is, what is that thing and how does it serve me? I played Persona 3 in 2016, right before my first trip to Korea. And I attribute that as at least a factor in a lot of the subsequent growth. It was a great period of time for me that the following five or six years, what worries me for myself is the danger of using games, using media, not as an inspiration, not as a source of understanding and joy and passion and exploration, but as a crutch, perhaps as a crutch to not have to face those things. And like I said, I don't think categorically any one activity is one or the other, but personally, I can feel the difference. So I know when I'm like riveted and engaged and getting a lot out of something. And I know when I'm sort of just doing something habitually to kill time or to avoid doing things I know I should be doing, to try to scrape a feeling out of something that what I really want is to try to get outside of the thing, but I feel I can't or I'm too afraid to try. It feels very qualitatively different. So things like, you know, cosplaying is invincible. I think it could be a really wonderful, fun thing that helps one engage in a community and help someone face challenges or even just the act of putting on a costume and going outside is, is cool in itself in a sense. That's more or less what comes to mind when I see Mark looking at the cosplayers of himself. Why can't we just live here? We could rent a booth, set up a little tent, survive on hot dogs, at the con? nachos. Because you die from a comic book overdose in like three hours. I die happy and it's worth it. <laughs> Speaking of entertainment, let him live. Amber, let the man live in a tent, read comics. This is very My Hero Academia where like the heroes are also hero fans. The relationship looks good though. They look, they look happy. Quality time, quality time. You okay? Hmm? Yeah, I'm good. Uh oh, spoke too soon. We can go do something you want to do too. Who says I don't want to do this? Right. Oh bro, if you like someone, it's so fun doing what they love. We don't get a lot of time together. So I want to make sure we're also doing stuff that you like. But this is, this is it, this is it. I'm not a good time. This is it, yeah, this is what she wants. But it's considered to think about it. Wait a second. Are we in a line? <laughs> oh, Amber spoke this one too. You don't want to be in line. I don't want to do a line. Uh, I draw the lines at lines. I'm a huge fan. Ah, uh, thanks buddy, it means a lot. <laughs> wow, such a generic response. You got Sorry, the automated response. Animation takes a long time. This is the creators talking. Very meta. We cut corners in other places to make it manageable. You ever notice that sometimes <laughs> when speaking has their mouth off camera so you never see their lips moving? I've never noticed that before. Can't wait to or see the we'll example. To the back of someone's head while they're talking <laughs> for the same reason. This is great. Other times we'll this do is a wide shot, slowly pan across it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really notice these things. Because all these scenes have limited animation, we can make the drawings even better. But sometimes <laughs> the artists get carried away. This is so great. It looks like a different show. Jeez, Japanese animation studios putting out a hit on this guy. Or the writers of the show. This reminds me of that Simpsons episode where they go to the Itchy and Scratchy studios and they're talking about repeating backgrounds while walking through a repeated background. Wasn't there a strike mid-season? This show definitely had its development hell. Rex snuck out of the GDA hospital and ran off on a mission by himself. Why? Uh, oh, I mean, this is your timing's not great. Sure. But uh, Rex, we like him now. You're gonna ditch me at Comic Con, aren't you? Oh no. Um, uh, Rex. But Re Rex. But maybe I could. No, it's okay. 
Go. If it was anyone else or any episode before last episode, we wouldn't bother. Thanks but... for holding on to that stuff for me. You're the best. I love you so much. Bye. Oh, and she's carrying his stuff. No, <laughs> it's so painful. One thing that really hit home for me watching previous episodes again while editing. This is such an obvious thing too, but it's always been obscured by my annoyance at the girlfriend character or wife character or what have you. It is really hard, <laughs> actually. <laughs> to d deal with this, to try to do this well. The thing that hit me the hardest was, yeah, Amber's right. Anytime he spends with her is a major sacrifice. Like I had said that about Mark many times, but that transfers to her and she's aware of that. That kind of pressure is really difficult. If you take it all the way to its extreme version, Amber is like, wow, people are dying because Mark is with me. <laughs> trying to prove himself? Just renewed motivation. Rex like cares about stuff. Even a bullet to the head couldn't kill you. It's pretty this badass. Guy, he's nothing. Just and he has no gun. Ordinary. I'll take this over gun any day of the week. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Does that just make a metal sound? <laughs> it's unexpected. I love Rex arc. I'm here for it. Those cute little flares. Now I'm paying you here. <laughs> Terrifying. Did much time learn your language. Sorry, I'm not gonna make fun of a language learner. Perfect. It's tough. I'm sure you're very busy, and I respect that you took the time to learn my language. Right? Yeah. You didn't learn it very well, but I'm still gonna kick. Some people don't even bother. Some people don't even learn like please and thank you in a foreign country. I want a victory for him. Yeah, it's not, not the success we were hoping for. And that was it. You okay? Mm, I'm fine. I do not have a bullet in my head. Dude, please. This is, this is this. important. Yeah, this is... This has meaning. Faith in Rex. We're bending it all on this hand laser. Hand can. That was pretty cool. Where was that before? Next time. Open with that. Yeah. All clear, send in the troops. Thanks, buddy. Okay, great job. Are you okay? You should not go in alone anymore. Yeah, I felt the same way after my dad and I... Yeah, I bet. What is going on? Why are the hearts heart moments suddenly involving Rex? Rex was actually improved by that bullet. It's really cool, though. Actually, I'm not sure anyone else could come back from what you went through. Also... I can't believe you can grow new teeth. Oh, fuck. I wish I had that superpower. <laughs> I didn't think about that, but... I owe you, so... I'll tell you what. You pick the day, and the Guardians and I will cover for you. Wow, that's really nice, if possible. Despite everything we've been through, we're still the best superhero team on the fucking planet. This is so cool. This is so cool. It's such an unexpected place. Oh, there you go. Now we can reset and... Uh try again so um those drones cost approximately <laughs> don't tell me the cost it just it would stop you from needing to transform you wouldn't get any younger and could age normally let me fix you uh, well if that fix is not the right word rudy I know you're a robot, but, or were a robot. I feel like there's something she's not disclosing about this. It doesn't seem like it's only that she wants to be in top form for fighting. I'm cursed, not broken. And I didn't yeah, ask obviously. for your help. At a certain point, you gotta back off. Make it clear that it's possible, but... Our lead is a guy who's so old, he shits dust. And his <laughs> boss is a suit who sacrifices all in a second to save white America. Then there's the girl who broke all her yeah, bones... Yeah, world's not in the best place. ...from the inside out. Which is fucked up. The pyromaniac who's going through some heavy personal shit after he traded half his brain for a bullet. Yeah, I'm not really hearing any major complaints, though, or any major valid criticisms. They're just weird. We're not the best superhero team on the planet. We're a family. Oh, really? Well, who's and better, like though? Family, we're all messed up in our own unique way. Shit, speak for yourself. But we're unbreakable when it counts. That's what makes us the best. The only people I can think of that rival them in terms of ability and importance is even Invincible. But right now they're running sole proprietorships. Well, Invincible's on the Guardians, in his way, at least. We're already two members down. You want to quit? Absolutely not. Like, if this is about Kate, I understand. I'm unmoored, Cecil. Unstable. Yeah, it's also about Alan. You just saved the goddamn planet from an invasion from Mars. I could have cost us that fight because I didn't trust Invincible. 
and then I almost started an interplanetary war with his one-eyed friend! All good reflections, but... You're not quitting. This is a temporary leave of absence. Yeah, I think that's the answer. We talked about. Do you understand me? I think the answer is let him quit, but make it very clear that you're always welcome back with no hard feelings, no judgment, and good chance he'll sort it out and come back. It's like how rappers retire, you know? <laughs> like, what does it even mean? There's no retiring from rap. There's no retiring for being a superhero. You are just not doing it for now. And also, Immortal's in a broken place, but actually I've been impressed by his judgment. Like, I don't remember him being super level-headed and all that wise before. We didn't see a lot of it, but it seems like he had tons of conflict with Nolan even before the betrayal. To have been in a compromised state and also concede to Invincible and that moment and give him the sound thing or whatever. I don't think that's so terrible. Like actually the reflection that he's a danger makes me less worried that he's a danger. Like what would be really terrifying and dangerous is he is totally unstable but refuses to back down or acknowledge anything ever. I feel like Rex has a chance here to, you know, be the spiritual leader of the group. It was just another dream. It wasn't real. It was real, William. It happened. In the memory. I know. No, but... you don't. You don't know. No one does. Maybe you can form a support group with Donald. I don't know what's worse. DA Sinclair taking me apart or those doctors putting me back together. This has got to be... I don't know. It's very easy for me to say because my brain wasn't put in a bionic body, but to the best of my ability thinking about it, practically speaking, it's a gift. That leads me to believe there's just something inherently off about the way these things are being constructed. You can imagine a scenario and it wouldn't feel off at all if Donald was like, wow, thank you, Cecil, for doing that. Water today? You rebuilt me. Lied to me. Took away my agency. The line wasn't great, but otherwise, you're welcome, Donald. How am I supposed to be me? You erased my memories. That wasn't my decision. Some of them. Then whose was it? Maybe it was his decision. Run! Hurry! Oh, it's not the first time. We have all of it on video? Damn. And take the memories, I don't know. God. How many times? How many times has Cecil had this conversation? Principal Winslow? It's Dean Winslow now, Mark. I... I didn't know you'd move schools. This is suspicious. Quite suspicious. But I know about your father. And I can only imagine how difficult it's been since he's passed. Sir. But you need to make a choice, Mark. If it's college, mean. then commit to that. If it's not, then commit to something else. But make a decision. Sound advice. I'll give you a month to prove me wrong. Well, I mean, he's going to fail that month. It's a foregone conclusion. Also, one thing that's doing from the start is that Mark actually doesn't care about college. He cares about Amber, and he's equating the two. Mark has never once said, I'm super bummed that I couldn't attend sociology class. I mean, no one in history has said that. This is maybe one of those moments where you realize you can go from point A to point C without point B, which is great. Realizing you can get what you want without needing the thing you're doing is, is amazing. It's so powerful. That's where I think a lot of life's alpha is found. But the commitment point is a little bit more difficult. Because it's not really about college, right? It's about Amber. They even flashed her face. I don't know how you find that alpha there. Dating Eve! <laughs> that might do it. No one's supposed to carry that much trauma. You thought it would slow you down. Stop you from doing your job right. Make you hesitate. But it's your call. Would it make you less hesitant? It's been your call. I can come back anytime. There's something I'm not understanding about this, isn't there? I mean, the market's hot, but you... Your You're hotter. Your even hotter. It's just hey, all right. Job, Debbie. <laughs> I feel that like bottle I'm of wine not looking so move. innocent anymore. Thanks for the lift, Paul. See you tomorrow. Stop it, Paul. Stop that thought right there. No, Paul. No, don't do it, Paul. I was wondering if um you'd like to have dinner with me. Uh, okay. Sometime. That's. I mean. All right. Tonight. Okay. Obviously. Well, I don't know why. I was expecting way worse. I was expecting like, hey, how about we finish that bottle of wine in your house? Dinner is okay. Do you know who you're following? He does not know. In that very material social value way I mentioned, there is no following Omni-Man. Though Debbie seems like with all her maturation, she's beyond that. I've seen a lot of dating material online aimed at men that focuses very heavily on imp improving one's material standings as a dating strategy. I think there's something useful to think about there. I think it's not unimportant to focus on various elements of your own life. If you're grounded to the right things, improve a material 
category is probably only a positive thing. And it's something to do. It's something to engage with that will encourage your growth and learning. I think that's kind of the where the real beauty of it, those things lie. But I also happen to feel like the importance of those things is somewhat overstated. This is easier said than done, but some of it comes down to just meeting the right person with the right values. Money is not going to make someone love you. Like you don't want to date the Debbie who's obsessed with the trips to Paris as her indicator of what makes a good romantic partner. You want to date the Debbie who wants someone warm and wonderful. I also think there's some degree of people who seem very materialistic, but are actually just using the material elements of things as signposts of the qualities that they really are attracted to or value. So those inner qualities remain the most important thing. And the other materialistic things perhaps will come as a secondary effect of those things. That being said, it's interesting to me to think about what dating will be like for Debbie after Omni-Man. It seems almost inevitable that no matter how good she is, she will be making comparisons. I had this guy pegged from the beginning. Mama. <laughs> oh, I missed you, Oliver. Their bond is really, really endearing. And little Oliver here is learning them all so quickly. Thank I'm you, Mary House Sitter. He picks up things quicker than any child I've ever worked with. Oh, he's growing at an incredible rate. This is the most dangerous babysitting job. I'm learning that everything happens earlier with Oliver. Why does that feel like heavy foreshadowing? Your little brother, quite the fast learner. <laughs> That's our Oliver. How school? This turned How's out really been? nicely. This is the family stuff is going well. I'm still a terrible boyfriend. She just knows why now. Debbie understands. I don't know if that's better or worse. Debbie, how did you deal it's with better. it? It's always better to know the truth. Oh, Debbie dropping some wisdom. That relates to Donald, too. What, did you think we just met, got married, and had you? No, but, yeah, but what was it Wait like? a minute, you're a human? <laughs> you, I mean. Hmm. Parents aren't real. He literally swept me off my feet. I mean, I was dating a superhero. Oh, he was so much fun back then. Yeah, yeah. He was so clueless too he's he still clueless instead of flowers he thought it was the same thing but better i mean he's not wrong imagine your boyfriend giving you a tree come on now no one's ever given me a tree like a full tree or any tree i don't know why i qualified that yeah related to what i was just saying i would imagine a change in values it is sort of a shift of priority and this probably is a very common life path people change what they're looking for from the just exciting thrill, passion to, you know, the warmth, support, companionship, friendship, reliability. Although some people don't. <laughs> Ever. He was also gone for so much of our time together. I was lonely. A lot. Just like my cat. And even now, with Oliver, your dad's not here. Not that I would want him here, but still. Not even your kid. It's really a relationship if you're mostly alone. Uh, this isn't as supportive as I you thought. You'd never met Dad. Well, that's a trick question because you have Mark. No, because I wouldn't have you. Right. Or Oliver. That's the only answer to that question. Even if it's just the three of us now. Wow, her including Oliver in that amazing. She's such a just a what if good you person. Have us? <sighs> no. Yeah. Well, how do you separate? I don't know. Yeah. And I'll also answer that question for her. No, it's a cliche and it's definitely oversimplified, but there is a lot of meaning in that saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. In the analysis, it's easy to say yes because of the pain, but it, you know, it connects back to the first thing she said about the truth is always better. Her experience is truth in a sense. It opened so much of the world and life to her, even if that was largely painful. And also it wasn't only pain. In a very optimistic zoomed out way of thinking about things, you sort of can't get it wrong if you survive. And if you don't let any defeat be final, even your mistakes are informative. And if you use your experiences to inform things about you that improve your conception, improve who you are, improve your life, then those experiences were in some level a gift. You can drive yourself absolutely insane with if onlys. That's pouring water into sand. It doesn't do anything. And you also, one, don't know it would have been better without those experiences. And two, would never have known what you know now, which is critical to who you are now. And if there's anything value valuable about who you are now, that's an essential link in that chain. And I also think the utility of the thing and the pain of the thing are related. Personally, I would say from experience that no matter how difficult a situation has been, no matter how much pain I was in at any given moment, if I fully wrap my mind around it and internalize what's actually useful and don't let it mingle with my self-identity or my chances for the future or think that things are hopeless or I'm doomed to fail or whatever. And I really understand the depths of what happened. The pain has a way of dissolving. That's not true for everything. I think it's not true for things for which there is no action that can be informed by the pain or it's much harder to do so. So for example, death of a loved one, there's nothing super actionable you can do to give yourself agency in that department. But other things like, you know, breakups, God, breakups can be devastating. But given the benefit of time and also self-reflection of realizing what part were the other person and how those were just human things that they were going through at that time. And maybe more importantly, the things you didn't like about the way you handle it and how that should inform who you are and what you do going forward. It can amazingly get to this point where it's almost a warm glow to think about. And I would wager a guess if there's any lingering baggage over a sufficient period of time, 
It's because one of those things hasn't been resolved yet. Ironically, this was happening right in the midst of me watching Invincible season one. But man, at that time and for the subsequent year, I was in a hellish relationship. My girlfriend was an escort, let's call it. She had a very strong and dominating personality, was 10 out of 10 skill level gaslighter, violent, prone to radical emotional outbursts over very tiny things. And worst of all, I was deeply in love with her. She just hit every possible compulsive button. You know, she was exactly my type physically. She was so much fun to be with and talk to when, you know, things weren't going off the rails. One of the smartest people I've ever met, extremely adventurous. I mean, I had some of the greatest adventures of my life with her. And the final breakup, which was her cheating on me in another country when we were on a trip together, was pretty brutal. It was a pretty devastating way to end that. And it kind of took me out for a couple months, but now going on, wow, already been two years. I actually feel really nice thinking about it. Critically, although I just mentioned a lot of her flaws, part of it was realizing that there were a lot of things I did and ways I behaved that I didn't like. And the responsibility for those things, at least, lies solely with me. And I think that's actually that's the only thing that's important to think about. It's my end. The important things to think about on her end are forgiveness, understanding that I played a part in it to a non-zero degree, and that also I can understand basically everything she did and why she did it and where she was. It evokes sympathy for me rather than anger. And so what I'm left with after that is just really great memories, an expanded understanding of myself, an excitement for what's possible to feel about someone, a much more clear-cut set of boundaries, thankfully, and a cat because that was her idea. So I can relate to the Mark thing too, though not on the same scale. Oh, That's gosh, the real answer, I think. Yeah, That's what Debbie will probably come to, who else to call. after some time has passed. Oh no. Do a flip. Tell us what's wrong. What's wrong? What's wrong is D.A. Sinclair took me apart and the government put me back together again. You're welcome. Me. You're welcome. Oh, it can do that? And he didn't know that before? The GDA rebuilt me just like they rebuilt you. Donald's support group, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know the official number, but I think I'm about 98% machine. How? How can you live with that? I couldn't. I had them erase my memory. In other shows, this is the fantasy, the dream. You're reborn with superpowers. You know, there's only two things I really need to be satisfied with my body, and one of them is my brain. But that was, that was a mistake. The two of you are helping me to see that. Now. This episode is about truth. This is related to the Debbie thing. We're not our bodies. We're the decisions we make. The lives we change. Damn, Donald. The people we love. A legacy bigger than your flesh and blood. That's the real DNA. <laughs> Donald doing even more good. Nothing under my clothes. Okay. So, no interruptions. No calls to go save the world. It's just us tonight. They can fly. Cecil can just beam in here. And I made a deal with Cecil to guarantee me two nights a week off going forward. That's that's cool. But I'm making a choice. And that choice is you. Well, that's definitely not ethical. I could see this being a mixed reading for but Amber. Maybe I'm cool with that. It doesn't really solve the problem. It makes her feel good. It's really nice. But there's still the issue of like, what is Mark not doing right now by being with me? I guess you can just ignore it. <laughs> Distract yourself with cloud flights and Paris dinners. This is very a whole new world. A lot of flying on this date. One day Amber's gonna be like, you know, how about for this date we don't fly? How about something on the ground? Spring break in Hawaii, huh? How do we afford the hotel? Oh, money. They have the best camping in Hawaii. Again with the camping. I should ask Cecil for a salary. Yeah, I'm about to say you don't get paid. Should I ask Cecil for a salary? You should ask Cecil for a salary, dude. You really be working for him. You can negotiate. You got a lot of leverage. You negotiated weekends. You're going to have to help me get my grades back up. Ooh. Well, I have this secret technique I could share with you. Called studying. <laughs> Shockingly, there's some situations you can't punch your way out of. You should try Grayson. first. Let's exhaust all options. Invincible. Come with me now. Come on now. Okay, you're sort of ruining our date here. Did you hear me, Mark? I also am a vulnerability. If you think you can cross the space between us before I tear this woman's head from her body. No. You're welcome. Why to haven't try. you been training, Mark? Why haven't you been training? Otherwise, I will return here and everyone dies. Beginning with her. <gasps> Major point. It's okay. It's okay. I need you to get out of sight, very anonymously. I have to go. Come back. I was thinking Ce Cecil can beam in, but so much worse. What do you want, though? You know, this doesn't feel hostile, necessarily. <laughs> How little you know of your own people. They're not my people. I will say this about the Velkermites. They're 
awful. They are callous, cold-blooded murderers. They are bound to some code. They at least, at least, have a very strong set of ethical principles for people they've put in a certain category. It's not that dissimilar from things you often see. For example, the Phantom Troop in Hunter Hunter, where it's like, this is my circle for everyone in my circle. I will be the best, most honorable, greatest person. All the things you would admire and like about someone. To everyone outside of my circle, good luck. They are just ants, at best. At worst, they are something to be taken advantage of and used and milked for my gain. And they don't understand how there's dissonance there. But whatever their thing is, they do seem to really abide by it. Speaking of Hunter Hunter, it also reminds me of the king for being terrible, but being a man of his word, being able to listen, being able to think, not being just one color. We're doing everything we can in case this turns ugly, Mark. But we don't have a lot of good options. Keep her talking as long as you can. I don't think this turns hostile. I don't get that vibe. Human civilization has less than an 18% chance of surviving the next two centuries. The powerful of this Does world she mean destroy without their, own their influence? Home, right, yeah. Strip resources for themselves. Yet here you are, hands and fists, worried about stopping me instead of stopping Who gets to decide, etc. No, it, it is complicated. It's very complicated. We have the technology to repair their climate, feed their hungry. Why don't you give it to us then? Just give it. Why do you need to rule? To help people. The simulations give Mark a less than 18% chance of surviving a combat encounter with her. The same as humanity. The field? I, I don't... Answer the goddamn question, Sinclair. Whoa, oh, God. Good Lord. Satellites are picking up a behemoth class kaiju. South Pacific. Closing now? Fast on a passenger cruise line. Again? With a double incidence? Dead humans do not benefit us in any way. Right, yeah. Uh, that's sort of what I was getting at. Look, there's a chip in danger. I need to go help. If you mean everything you're saying... You won't try to stop me. This is blurring all sorts of lines. You. Yeah, I had a feeling that would happen. God, this kaiju has terrible timing, or the best timing? It definitely has timing. <laughs> I got something to prove to your visitor, Auntie Vilkermite. It'd be so embarrassing to lose right now. Vacation is canceled. I can just feel her judging. Oh no, they're getting titanic Stop them from getting titanic Mark. She could probably just destroy- yeah, yeah. I feel like that was coming. That was easy. Oh, this is sort of embarrassing for Mark. There's no real threat now to his words of fighting her. Be the Viltrumite you're supposed to be. Be your father's son. What I'm not seeing is what's the connection no. between absolute rule and helping? No. I'm not one of you. Well, I mean, I know the argument they'd make, but I don't think it necessarily follows. Like, if it's just a matter of saving lives through technology, etc. Surely, if you gave humans the technologies, they would use it. It's very easy to point to an issue that everyone can agree is terrible and make the argument that because this is bad, we must do X, ignoring the complications of X, taking fully for granted that X actually solves the problem you're claiming it solves, which, like, for the Vilkermites, big doubt, you know? Net human life saved. I mean, eventually, after you kill all the weaklings, wasn't that the whole initial thing? And let's just say, for argument's sake, that human lives will be saved on net by Viltrumite occupation. There's still the ethical consideration of choice. It's not clear to me that, like, number of lives is the metric, even though that might sound callous. To make a very oversimplified, somewhat ridiculous analogy, let's say there's somebody with a drug problem, and it's very clear that they would be better off without this drug problem. Taking that person and locking them in a room for the duration of their lives with no drugs solves the problem, but clearly is not the solution. You could maybe make the argument in this particular case that that's justified for a short period of time, long enough for them to quit the habit, but that's still dubious. And also it doesn't really seem like that would be effective. Like the only way to absolutely ensure success would be that like permanent box, which is what Viltrumite occupation sounds like. And that's completely ignoring. They would kill indiscriminately at their will towards these goals. It can't be the only consideration. It's a very like utopian utilitarian argument that robs the complexity and meaning of life, etc. Also just in general, I'm really big on the idea of systemic risk. Risk. And I think sometimes if you think about it in terms of a system, even if things are going really well and it's a snapshot of the perfect society, if there's a single point of failure that could wipe the whole thing out, it might end up being a worse system than one where the individual elements are not going as well. And maybe there's a lot of things that are going wrong, but it's more spread out. There's no wipeout or game over event. And the Viltrumites are a very clear possible game over event where you just are surrendering any input one individual has over whether or not they live or die. Maybe humanity's not perfect. And, and maybe we mess things up a lot, but we need to make our own decisions. Yeah, I think that's at the crux of it. Even if they're sometimes She got pissed wrong. at that. Uh, after argument and logic and all these saved lives, you still cannot see the truth. She could just enforce this if she wants to. She wants him to come around. It means something to her. Wow. 
Oh, I thought she was gonna leave. She's going right to the killing of him? Or is it sending a message? That 18% is dropping precipitously. Now it's 0.18%. Where's that death laser when you need it? I gotta hit him. Nah, uh, she's not even... You dare interrupt your education? I was never a good student. Yeah, there you go. School sucks. Suck it, lady. Oh, okay. Mark sucked it. Oh, Mark. That was a lot of skips. Like a rock. The Guardians are on their way, but their ETA is 22 minutes. And it's the guard. What is Rex going to do? Throw a flare at her? It'd be like feeding him the wolves. Yeah. One goddamn built from might all by our lonesome and we're fucking useless. Yeah, and there's a whole Sir, lot more where that came from. There's another option. I don't like this. I don't like the way you said that, Donald. This just popped into my head. I don't know why everything is Fox Die to me. Metal Gear Solid had such a profound influence on the way I think about stuff. But Fox Die. If you have Omni-Man's genetic code, you can maybe find a virus that would kill Viltrumites, which would also kill Mark. You can't beat her, kid. Say it. Get her to leave and we'll get ready for these assholes together. Please train, Mark. You need to train. You need training time and also to use the training time to train. No. Yeah, I kind of saw that coming. We may have just sped up the invasion. But props for the balls. Oh no, please don't tell me Mark's used again as a weapon. Just say the goddamn words, Mark. We can't go back now, it would be embarrassing. <laughs> Unconsciousness is probably the best thing for you right now. Either you need me, or you don't. Make up your mind. This raises his esteem, though, for a Vilkermite. He's a true warrior. Yeah, the sweet release of unconsciousness. He will demonstrate the error of your ways, and this whole planet will pay the price. She's got a heart in there somewhere, as warped as she is, culturally. I pray you come to your senses before then. She, she obviously cares, and doesn't want to kill him, and respects him. Maybe even likes him a little bit. Maybe that's the answer to Mark's dating troubles. Maybe Eve was a red herring this whole time. That would be the great irony. He ends up marrying a Vilkermite. And he has a vacation house on Viltrum. Going down this fanfic rabbit hole. Maybe there's more he can do for humanity on Viltrum than on Earth. Especially if he's not going to train. Which he clearly doesn't want to do for some reason. Vilkrum lady also so made a tactical the error because she just gave them a warning. Towards deep space. Well, thank fucking God. Keep watch. This was a humiliating and sobering day for whatever this agency is, and everyone, and Mark. He really rolled the dice on that one, Mark. All over a few words. It's more than just words. Who is this guy? Well, we're gonna figure out a way to change that. But those nights off you wanted, I'm afraid that's a thing of the past. Yeah, that's fair. Sorry, Amber. But also, you're welcome, Amber. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, Amber. That was not great for you. That was a tough experience. Her hand was like, it's like iron on my neck. Like she could have pulled me apart in a second. Oh man. Recently I went to Thailand. I know this is controversial, but I went to one of those tiger petting things. They're not drugged. One of these tigers jumped playing with a toy and I rethought my entire existence. We think we have a grasp on what power means. Oof. To see an actual wild animal like that, an apex predator, just existing, doing anything at all that it requires physicality, it's awe-inspiring and humbling. This, I don't know, 200-pound, 300-pound animal just flew from the mildest and gentlest of leg movements. I have a kimchi fridge in my apartment that was just here when I moved in. It's about half the height of a normal fridge freezer unit, and my cat can jump up on that effortlessly. It's a different thing to see that to scale, <laughs> like with a full-grown tiger, but to the same proportions, it's just different. Who am I to be upset? Or sad or, or feel anything when you're literally saving the world, when you disappear for months at a time, when I'm alone again instead of being with my boyfriend. She's been keeping this in for a very long time. My life matters too. Maybe it's small, maybe it's not earth shattering, but, but it matters. And it doesn't matter when I'm with you. Worse than that, it's a weapon someone can use against you like that woman yeah, that, did. Yeah, this really changes everything, that whole thing, this consideration. It's not great. And there's no hiding in the identity. This isn't going to change, is it? This is the life. I can't live in your world. I want to. I really tried, but I can't. These are the hardest breakups. I'm sorry. Me too. 
there was a time when I would have been less willing to understand this. The whole, you know, circumstances can drive you apart. I think this is the plot of La La Land and I had a huge fight with my then girlfriend about this very thing. The irony of which is that we ended up breaking up in a very similar way. It was that COVID made it impossible for us to each go to our respective countries for an unknown amount of time. This is going to sound unsatisfying at first, but I actually think it contains something useful inside of it. And that's the idea that you can kind of predict a relationship success, not by someone's heart, not by how intense your feelings are for one another, but how many elements of the situation are going against the grain. Water definitely flows downhill when it comes to relationships. For all you tell yourself you want to have something with someone, for all you try to manufacture relationships, it really kind of has to happen organically and it has to be sustained organically. It's not a coincidence that a lot of the best friendships and probably relationships form in places like school, your existing social circle, work, etc. It's because that removes a substantial amount of the effort. And effort is in a way the death of relationships. For me, if I think about my friendships, there is very little work involved and almost all a feeling of play and natural desire. There is very little of like, oh, I have to, you know. In a romantic relationship, of course, some of that is inevitable. That's part of the sacrifice and part of the promise. But every layer you add on top of that of work, let's call it, or unnatural effort beyond just the standard default package you need to make a promise to someone, you are exponentially increasing the difficulty and decreasing the likelihood of long-term success. One example of this would be long-term relationships. In my experience, they only have a chance when there is a definitive, clear, promised end date where it will stop being a long-term relationship. In other words, the success of a long-term relationship is kind of predicated on it no longer being a long-term relationship. And at heart, it's something like you're doing a lot more unnatural work for a lot less of the natural rewards. The silver lining in this that I mentioned is I think looking at it in this light makes it a little bit more tangible and knowing how to proceed. It's helpful in trying to choose a partner in the first place to have that consideration. And then in an existing relationship, you can actively try to eliminate those points of stress or unnaturalness. For Mark and Amber, their feelings for each other feel genuine and real and mutual. So really lucky, but there's just so many things baked into the equation that are just constant stressors again and again. These nagging aches that have a way of eating you over time. I think that's why it partly felt like a foregone conclusion that it would not work out. For someone as conscientious as Amber, to spend every moment with Mark thinking that because we're together now, people are dying, is just too much. And on Mark's side, every time he does what he's supposed to do and also what he wants to be, wants to do because he wants to be invincible, he's thinking, oh crap, Amber's going to be pissed off or I'm failing Amber. That's a slow, painful death. A real life example of this would be like somebody sacrificing their dream or feeling like they sacrificed their dream for their partner, that's a decision that can be made, but it's dangerous to make that voiced. And I think some people will sometimes in moments of anger or whatever, use that as a point of leverage. Like, well, I did this for you. That's death because not only are you dealing with that, but by having voiced it to the other person, they are now dealing with it. And it puts friction on literally everything you will ever do from that point on. I can give two examples of this from experience. One is the aforementioned girlfriend. She was the reason I moved back to Korea and I was perfectly fine and happy with that decision. But there's still that thought when things go wrong where I did all of this for you and voicing that thought game over. Because on the other side, it's like, I never asked for that. And it's also a lot of pressure. It's not play. It's work now. I have to do this because he did all this, you know, this sort of comparative tit for tat. Who did what to whom? Who did what for whom? It's exhausting. Another girlfriend of mine ended relationships with a friend of hers because she felt her friend was a bad influence for her and didn't know how to end the behavior without ending the friendship. So she just ended the friendship, which is really sweet and shows a lot of care. But just realistically, it's not the only element to that feeling. It's also, it was never my intention to change you. Now, because of me, and something I had no control over, you have pain that you associate with me. I'm not sure I necessarily wanted that element of it. It's really complicated. Oh, that was my phone. Big day for Mark. Huge day. Talk to mom. Yeah, there you go. Good boy. Hi, mom. Hello, Mark. What? No, stop it. Damn you! Today, of all days. Oh, you are getting an invincible punch right to the giant abnormal brain. A triple whammy today. Viltrumites, Amber, and Mom. Well? He's kind of cool. He's a cool kid. I, I mean, see. he must be destroyed. You mean you failed to convince him? It's this guy. He is poisoned, just like his father. This is not a great case for Earth survival for them. Come on, Alan, we need you. Oh, I think they saw me. Oh, they definitely saw me. Oh, this is round two. Uh... How improved is he? Last time that hurt a lot more. And you still have your eye for now. Nice. Oh, he drew blood. Invincible couldn't do that. What is this liquid <laughs> coming out of my nose? Only other creatures bleed. You want to take me to prison with those punches? Let him take you and bust out of there. Yeah, let's not sleep on them now. He literally is sleeping on them. Not yet. Oh, there you go. Oh, he's doing it. Yeah, that's my Alan. 
That boy's smart. And that's how I met your father. <laughs> Alan, our space ace in the hole. Hot damn, this season is good. Such a relief. Okay, there's a lot going on. I think there's one thing we can say with absolute certainty. Mark needs to train. <laughs> Why? Please train and preferably on a beach. If I had to pick a theme for the episode, it would be truth. It applies to Debbie. It applies to Amber. It applies to Donald. It also applies to Mark. It hasn't really been abundantly expressed. We haven't gotten, you know, internal monologue or even really detailed conversations with him about this, but from episode one to episode seven, he's definitely made peace with the fact that he's a Viltrumite, it seems. He's rejecting that in name, I'm not your people, but more importantly, it feels like he knows who he is. And part of that includes his father. Things he's openly understood and has chosen not to perpetuate about his father. And things that I think tacitly he has. Either way, there is no distancing, there's no severing Mark from Omni-Man.